Welcome to this tutorial by Thrive Themes where we'll have a look at exactly what you need to do when you're building websites and web pages to make sure that all of your content is responsive and looks great on any device and any screen size. Hi, I'm Shane from Thrive Themes and I'll be walking you through four simple rules to follow while you're building content to make sure that your content looks great on any device. I'm going to be showing you how to do this using Thrive Content Builder, which is our front end editor, but these same rules actually apply no matter what you use. So let's dive right in and look at rule number one. And that is to have a mobile preview when you're working or to check a mobile preview before you publish. Here's what I mean by that. Here we have a simple filler content blog post, and this is running a default WordPress theme as well. And this is usually when you're editing your content, when you're creating content, usually you're on a desktop device. So you have a large screen to work with. And so this is, you know, the full screen, the let's say default view of that content. When, when you wanna make sure that you also know what this looks like on a smaller screen. And the easiest way to do that is if I just get this tab here and I decouple it, so to speak, and I open it in a separate window and I can resize this window and actually see how this content behaves on different screen sizes. So I can see this is the full view right here, full width. And then as I make it smaller, I can see what happens with these elements. And I can go down to a width like this. This would be about the dimensions of a mobile phone. Now, this will only work if you use a responsive theme. If you use a Thrive theme, they're all fully responsive. That's no problem. And basically, I mean, any you know, any decent theme that has been created uh, in the last few years is going to be responsive. But it's important to be aware of, you know, things like what happens with this sidebar, what happens with this layout here, as what happens with my title as well, as I shrink that viewport. It's always great to also preview it on an actual mobile device, but without having to switch between devices and so on, having a little preview, just a slim window like this, for a preview, for previewing purposes, is the fastest way to do it. All right, so that's rule number one. We'll get back to that as we go through the other points. So rule number two is to always make sure you upload images at the optimal size. For this example, I've inserted this image of a perplexed cat in my post, because why not? And if I go to a preview here and I do a hard refresh, so this is a reload of the page, for a new visitor. You can see this happening, right? It takes ages for this image to load. And this would be even worse for someone on a mobile device who might be on a slow connection. Uh, that could take ages for this image to load. And you might be wondering, well, why? Because it's not that big. Well, if we right click here, we go to this view image option, we can see the actual full size image and we can see this is a huge image. All right, this is a huge image. So this would be, this comes straight out of the camera, high resolution image. And in the content then it has been resized to this smaller size, but it will still load the entire image and then shrink it down. So a visitor here will have to download this massive image, uh, even though they only see the small version of it. So let's jump back to the editor. And like I said, on a mobile device, this problem can be even worse. Uh, because the connection might be quite slow. So instead of what we have here is we just inserted the image and then we made it smaller like this, which is nice that you can do it, but you should still always try to upload images at the size that you'll be showing them at. So instead of doing that, I would insert the image here and I would choose an image. So here you can see this is the original image and it's six megabytes and it's huge. This is a resized image that is 500 pixels wide. That is the width we actually want in the post. And this eliminates the problem. So if we save the changes and here, if we do a hard refresh on this page again, it basically reloads instantly. It's the, the image loading is no longer an issue because the file size is that much smaller. Our mobile preview here will also serve us well if I reload this. This also shows us what happens with this image as the layout changes and so on. And shouldn't be a problem, but it's again, it's important to know what does this actually look like on different screens? How does it act? So our mobile preview here is useful for this as well. On to rule number three, use margins and paddings carefully. Here's what I mean. If you want to 
adjust the position of something on the page, you can do that with margins and paddings. So for example, if I take this paragraph here, I can add margins and paddings and vertically that, that works perfectly well. So I can say, you know, let's give it a top margin of 50, a bottom margin of 50. That gives it more space above and below. That should never be a problem. But if I want this text block to be narrower, I might think, oh, I'll do the same left and right. I'll have left margin 50, right margin 50, maybe even more. Maybe I want it to be more narrow. Let's do 80 and 80. And this looks quite nice with the image as well here with the text aligned under the image like that. But here again, the mobile preview is very important because you can catch a mistake. In our mobile preview, if I refresh this, here's what we have. You can see that now this text has become ridiculously narrow and practically unreadable, barely two words fit per line. So this is really, really bad. And the reason this happened is because I set these margins in absolute pixel widths, 80 on each side. And that doesn't change. You will always have the same margin, no matter how wide or narrow the screen is. And then on narrow devices, that will just look absolutely horrible. So that's the problem with absolute values like pixels in um, on mobile devices. So what's the solution to this? The easiest way is if you're using the Thrive Content Builder, instead of putting margins on this, you want to use a content container. So I'll put a content container here and I'll put a paragraph, I'll use a different one. I'll drag this paragraph into my content container. And at first that seems to make no difference, but if I click on the container, I can change the width of the text. And I can also change the alignment of the text if I want, but I can change the width of the text like this. So essentially we now have the same result. These two basically look the same, but the difference is that this container defines a maximum width. So it says, make it no wider than this. So think of it as saying, make this paragraph no wider than this, instead of saying, always have this amount of space left and right. So again, we save the changes and we check the mobile preview. And here you can see that this now looks totally fine, right? And as I resize this, the margins start appearing if there's enough space. And if there isn't, then it stays reasonable and the text stays readable. So in other words, use content containers or relative values instead of absolute values. And of course, when in doubt, always rule number one, check the mobile preview. And then finally, rule number four, alignments versus column layouts. So alignments are another thing that can be tricky and column layouts are usually the solution. For this example, I'm gonna take this image and I'm going to make it right aligned and let's say I want this image and the text to be side by side. So maybe I'll set it like this, right? So now I have a text, text on one side, image on the other side. And this looks fine at the full resolution here at the on a large screen. But once again, if we switch to our mobile preview, we can see that it doesn't always look great on every screen size. So on some, this would be like a tablet type size. And here we can see this is getting quite cramped and we don't really have this side by side effect anymore. And then, yeah, as you can see, as it gets narrower, sometimes it can get quite awkward. Like here was just one word hanging next to the image like this. And then eventually the image will be on top of the text. But that's something to be aware of with left and right aligned images or other elements. This can often happen where it just doesn't look quite right on some screen sizes and the desired effect of having text and image next to each other doesn't really work on most screen sizes. The solution to this is to use column layouts instead of alignment. So I'll grab a half and half column right here and I'll put the text into one column and the image into the other column. And I'll actually make the image center aligned inside this column. So now we have this, which looks very similar to what we had before if we save this. But now when we look at the mobile preview and we start changing the size, you can see that this happens. So basically the image and the text will always be side by side. They will always be aligned like this as a block. Even if the text takes up more space, it won't wrap around the image. So you'll, you'll always have that side by side layout. And as soon as there isn't enough space, then the columns will be stacked on top of each other. So now we have the image below the text instead. So we never have that awkward thing where, you know, just one or two words are hanging next to the image awkwardly. We always have a good and readable layout. This, by the way, is the reason why quite commonly 
you will see central aligned images used. So instead of a lot of side by side layouts, even though you can do that with columns and it looks fine, but it's also one of the reasons why it's become quite common to see, you know, central aligned text blocks, central aligned images above them, because that will look fine on any screen size. So those are the four simple rules and combined with the right tools, assuming that you're using mobile responsive themes and mobile responsive content element, that means you have perfectly responsive content, no matter what device your visitor is using. And of course, if you use Thrive Themes and Thrive Content Builder and other tools provided by Thrive Themes, this will always be the case. Thank you for watching. And if you have any questions or any thoughts you want to share about this, just leave a comment below and we will reply.